Hey, this is Gin Dump Shows from MassLive.com. I am in Medford in the Wellington Yard uh, where the mock-up of the MBTA Orange Line car coming in a couple of years. Uh, the frame is being built in uh, China and then they're being shipped over and it will be completed in Springfield in a factory in Springfield. Uh, and I'm here with uh, one of the, the top officials behind this project uh, and he's going to walk us through um, the new car uh, was a two-third, a two-third scale mock-up, right? Correct. So th this mock is a this is a two-third mock-up, and it represents it represents a, uh, a married pair. Mm -hmm. So currently, the Orange Line operates in in semi-permanently married pairs, and what that means is a two-car consist with an operator's cab at each end. Mm -hmm. So this mock-up is designed to represent all those areas of the of the um, cab. Um, I think the first thing that you'll notice is the is the exterior paint scheme and this actually was based on the uh, public vote so we actually received three different renderings and the public actually voted on the paint scheme that they like the best so that's what this mock-up represents uh, if we walk up the ramp All we right. can show you we can talk about some of the features on the vehicle So one of the first features I think most people notice is the width of the doors. And the doors are actually, it's a 64 inch wide opening. Uh, each leaf is 32 inches, as opposed to currently right now, you have a 23 inch leaf. What this does for us, if you ever have a situation where you have to lock a door leaf out, you'll still be ADA compliant. So that was a very important uh, feature for system-wide accessibility. The other things, if you could focus down here, um, that piece stripping out is called a gap mitigation device, and the purpose of that is to bridge platform gaps. And we currently have it deployed. We did we did stakeholder meetings with with different groups, and one of the groups we brought to it was system wide accessibility. And when they boarded the train, yeah, they actually just retracted it. So can we deploy that again, please? So you can actually extend. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Sense of edge. Very nice. So this train also has uh, four dedicated accessibility areas. Um, similar to the commuter rail operation, we have a four seat dedicated area. And then we also have a 100% uh, dedicated accessibility area. So there are four of these areas on each, on each car. One of the features you might notice is a security camera. Yep, there it is. So there are eight cameras on a car. And also with the cameras, if you notice over here, that's a passenger emergency intercom. So what will happen if a passenger needs assistance, if they press that, both cameras in the area will also be activated. That information will also be not only available to the operator, but it's also available to the operations control center so they can better assess the situation and make sure the correct resources are applied. Awesome. Um, we got some folks in the cab here. Well, they're actually yeah. yeah. Hold off on the cab. Hold sure. Off on the cab. There's windscreens. Yeah. So, uh, um, as part of the design process, we met with various stakeholders, and one of the groups we met with was was the MBTA Police Department. And one of their concerns was that there's there's a lot of robberies where basically before the train leaves, somebody reaches in and steals somebody's cell phone, camera, computer bag. So these screens were added. It's just an added security measure. So actually to reach around, you'd actually, you'd actually be standing on the train. Very nice. So another feature that we have is the LCD screens. And this is this is actually a dual function feature. And one of the functions is it's a it's a moving spider map. So along with the automated announcements and the destination signs, this will actually tell you as you're traveling through the system what, what's where the stations are and what, what station you will be approaching. But the other feature is also used for advertising. So this is something for the marketing people and something hopefully it could generate revenue is, is if they're having a, um, uh, a sale someplace, what they envision if you pull into a station and real-time information that you know, the seals going on here are kind of direct people to very specific uh, locations. And New York City has something like that, right? Something I believe like so, yes. Yes. Um, the seats also are, are um, we got away obviously from the class seats. So the, the um, folks that are making the seat, uh, their final mold wasn't developed yet. So the seat size 
and the material the same, but there is a patent in the seat, but the mock-up does not reflect that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other features that is, is, is different, and this will more affect the operations folks, if you come down here, so we talked about having a cab on each end. Um, this is called a Hoshler panel. And by doing this, basically, so the married pairs had a cab on each end, now they don't. Hmm. So, so each married pair, there's an operating cab on one end, but this panel here has all the same controls in it that the operator would need to operate a train. Oh, interesting. So obviously this is locked and secured. Mm -hmm. But what this, what this is, is, is intended for is to allow the operator to do yard movements in an emergency situation. They could operate the train from this end, but the intended operation is out of the cab. Well, what this, what this did though, it gave us more capacity on the vehicle. So seating wise, um, we really didn't gain any extra seats. And if you think about it, we have wider doors. Mm -hmm. So we've lost seating there and we have more dedicated accessibility areas. So the seating requirements specifically didn't increase, but capacity wise, because of the space, we actually able to carry more riders. So if we want to walk down to the other end, we can sure. show you the operator's cab. All right. I don't know if you want to sit in the seat. Uh, sure, yeah, why not? So this is the operator's cab. And this also was something that we had various meetings with stakeholders. So uh, the inspectors and operators, and the inspectors are folks that actually train the operators how to drive a, uh, a transit vehicle. And we got a soft block up, and what that was was a tool for us and basically all the all the functionality was defined per the technical specification but really the ergonomic aspect of it so you went from a, a control if, if you go on an older train there's a Siniston which controls the train now we have a master controller so everything is basically right hand operation now so all the switches and configuration of how they operate it need to be laid out according to that so this was an area that that was a lot of you know cooperation and inputs that basically the folks that are the uh, end user so, um, Jeff, earlier, I, I know you were at the uh, press conference and Governor Baker had asked uh, the Chief Operating Officer to talk about some of the features based on the Red Line train incident. Right. So, one of them actually is this camera up here. Oh, okay. So, this is, you're uh, referring to the ghost train, the so-called ghost train. Uh, I, I don't know what you're referring to. It, but <laughs> sure. Um, but the, the camera was added, but more importantly, that device next to you, that master controller on the right-hand side, that has to be in full service brake. Mm -hmm. So if you initiate emergency bypass, it's interlocked, so you will not be able to operate the train until you're at that position. And there's also an alerter system, and it's similar to the control of a locomotive, where you have to demonstrate someone's actively controlling the cab. A locomotive is much more advanced in the sense that if you turn a light on or turn the wipers on, it resets the timer. Um, this is not quite as advanced, but the, the theory is, is the same. All right. And then we see through the window that that's the old uh, version right there. Um, and how, how old are those trains? So I believe they went into service in 1979, 1980. Okay, all right. So, and when will uh, the customer, uh, the T rider, physically set foot on one of these? So, what's going to happen is the uh, scheduled delivery of the pilot train, and the pilot train is a six car consist, and that's scheduled to arrive um, this year, December. To, uh, December. 17th, 2017. Um, there is an extensive testing process, and that's really a chance that there is a lot of advanced systems and a lot of advanced communication on the vehicle. So there's a there's a pretty thorough and comp complex testing process that has to be done, and based on the performance of the vehicle, we're hoping we're hoping within 10 months that the first vehicles will enter revenue service. Excellent. All right. So, do you have any questions or? Um, I, I don't think so. Is there anything I haven't asked about that you want to add? Or? Um, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of features. It's really, if you have any additional questions, we want to have an answer. Well, it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful train car. I like the uh, addition there of the Super Bowl champion flag there. I, uh, that was a nice, nice touch there. Yeah, that's a little hometown pride. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be adding another one. All right. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think that about does it. Um,
Folks, I'm Gin Dumchus with MassLive.com. Uh, this has been a tour of the MBTA Orange Line mock-up, uh, which they will be on their way to Springfield for completion relatively soon. The uh, Springfield factory will be done, um, completed later this year, I think, right? Uh, so, so the Springfield factory, there are actually two aspects of it. One mm -hmm. is the manufacturing facility, and the other one was old Westinghouse building that the mm -hmm. city of Springfield asked them to maintain. Mm -hmm. And that building they actually received an occupancy permit for so they're using that as their corporate office right now. All right. So. Excellent. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, check MassLive.com for more. Uh, plenty of photos, plenty of uh, video. The governor was here earlier. Going to have his remarks too. And uh, check it out. Thanks.